Hello, mighty companions. This is Earl Purdy. I want to welcome you to Hardcore, Hardcore, Hardcore Course in Miracles with Earl Purdy, and we and we're going to talk about how we're going to talk about how is connection, how is correction made? How do you make correction? How do you make correction? That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. We're going to see how do you deal with the ego? How do you make correction? How do you do correction, whether it's in yourself or correction in someone else from a Course in Miracles perspective? So we're going to talk about that. We're going to start out with a song to keep to get us centered, and then we're going to dive into and then we're going to dive into it. Here we go. Mighty Companion. This is Earl Purdy. I'm so glad that you all are here. We're going to be in a section called How is Correction Made in A Course in Miracles. And we're going to be in the Manual for Teacher. We're going to be in the Manual for Teachers and the Course in Miracles and the Foundation for Inner Peace. Uh, how is correction made? How is correction made? How do you deal with your ego and somebody else's ego? How do you correct according to A Course in Miracles? And I emphasize according to the Course in Miracles, according to the Course in Miracles. And the Course in Miracles defines itself as a course in right thinking, a course in right perception. And if you really want to benefit from a Course in Miracles, then remember that you don't have to believe the ideas, you don't have to accept the ideas, you don't have to even welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas uh, you might actively resist. Do you know that you might actively resist some of the ideas? 
Some of the ideas you will find hard to believe. Some of the ideas you will find quite startling. You're not being asked to judge the ideas. You're not being asked to judge the ideas. You're not being asked to judge the ideas. You're not being asked to judge the ideas at all. It's the use of the ideas that will give the ideas meaning to you and will show you that the ideas are true. Using the ideas will show you that the ideas are true. I'm going to get you up on my other phone so that I can see your see uh, your comments. For some reason, it's not showing up uh, immediately the way it normally does. And we're going to be on page 47 in the Manual for Teachers, section 18, uh, page 47, how is correction made? How is correction made? <clears throat> Correction of a lasting nature. And what is it that you can call correction of a lasting nature? Well, that's the only kind of correction that's true correction according to the course. The only kind of correction that is true correction is correction is correction that lasts. A correction that you can count on. That's what the Course in Miracles calls true correction. Let me get let me get this up. So true correction is what? True correction is correction that lasts. Uh, now, you're not going to be able to have a correction that lasts until you do what? The Course says you're not going to be able to have a correction that lasts until you stop confusing your interpretations with necessarily being the truth. So correction is not going to happen until we stop confusing our interpretations and our judgments and the meanings that we give to things with the truth. There's the truth and then there's the way we see things. There's the truth and there's the way we judge things. So the Course is saying there won't be in a real lasting correction until we stop confusing interpretation with fact. And the Course says that that is the same as saying uh, we got stop confusing illusion and the truth. So, so there won't be real correction in my experience until I stop confusing my interpretations and me thinking my interpretations and judgments are true. And I confuse that with absolutely being a fact. That's the way that it is. Okay. All right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Did y'all hear that? That correction of a lasting nature is not going to happen until you stop confusing your judgments with necessarily being the truth. Okay. Then it says, so how do you handle that? Well, let's, go, let's look at the paragraph. He's, the Course in Miracles says, if you argue with the person about an ego thought, and magic thought is an ego thought. A magic thought is a thought that somebody's having that they're doing something all by themselves and on their own. A magic thought is a thought of the ego. It's a thought of guilt or fear or anger. Uh, if you argue with the person about whatever it is that they're saying, it's not based on love. If you attack a person's perceptions and interpretations. If you try to establish with that other person that they're making a mistake, uh, if you try to demonstrate the falsity of what somebody else is saying that's not rooted in love, the Course says you are trying to, you're actually witnessing to its reality. If you argue with the person about something they're talking about, if you attack what they're talking about that you think is not based on love, that's a magic thought. If you try to establish the error if you try to demonstrate that what that person is saying is false, you're just witnessing to the reality of it. So when you witness to the reality of an unloving thought, because you're constantly trying to correct everybody around you, then depression is then inevitable. Because you proved to that other person, the pupil and yourself, that it's your job to escape from what is real. Now, the thing with the Course in Miracles is that the temptation is to rush and keep on going, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make sure that I hear what the Course in Miracles is saying so that I can use it. First of all, I have to remember that if I want true correction, and true correction is a correction that lasts, then I have to stop 
confusing my interpretations and judgments with what the facts are or what the truth is. So how do I do that? Well, if I argue with the person, if I attack what they're saying, if I try to establish that they're making a mistake, if I try to demonstrate the falsity of what they're saying, then the Course in Miracles says I may not know it, but what I'm doing is really making it even more real. So when I make something negative and fearful real, then he says it's inevitable that you become, the Course says it's inevitable that you become depressed because now you prove to the other person and yourself, pupil and yourself, that it's your task to escape from what's real. But don't you know it's impossible to, to escape from something that's real? It's impossible to escape from something that's true. So what is true? The Course says reality is changeless. What is real doesn't change. The truth is always true. Love is always love. love. Love never changes from love. What's true is always true. So we're being told that reality doesn't change. What's the truth? You can always count on it. It's consistent. It's eternal. It's always there. So anything that's real, that's what makes it real. It's the fact that it stays consistently the same and it doesn't change. Gravity isn't here today and gone tomorrow. When something is real, then it's consistent. So the Course says magic thoughts, which are thoughts of fear, thoughts of being on your own, thoughts of anger, thoughts of separation, thoughts that you're a body, thoughts that you're separate from God or separate from love. The Course says these thoughts are, are illusions. And do you know that an illusion is a thought that is false? It's an idea that's not true. An illusion is an idea that's not true. It's so good to be with you all, and I really want to thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being consistent in tuning in so that we can remember the truth together. I'll say it again. A magic thought, which is a thought of fear and separation and upset, and separation and upset, it's a false idea. He says, otherwise, salvation, which is healing, would only be the same age-old impossible dream in just another form. But the dream of your healing, the dream of salvation, the dream of your happiness, the dream of your peace has new content. So what is the Course in Miracles doing? The Course in Miracles is giving us new content. It's giving us new meanings. It's not the form alone in which the difference lies. What we are getting now is new content. So remember, some of these ideas you may actively resist. Some of these ideas you will find hard to believe. Some of these ideas may seem to startle you. You're not being asked to judge and analyze the ideas. It's using the ideas that's going to give the ideas meaning and that will show you that the ideas are true. If you use the ideas, if you use the ideas, use what idea? That you're not gonna really be able to heal and correct something in your life until you understand that when you're looking at stuff, you're looking at your interpretations of it. And it's important that you not confuse your interpretations of what's going on with the truth. So do you know that if you argue with the person about their ego thoughts, if you attack their ego thoughts, if you try to establish the error of their ego thoughts, if you try to demonstrate that their ego thought or magic thought is false, you're just really making it real. You're making that so real that you think you have to argue about it or correct it. But I'm listening to people talk about politics and religion. In most cases, I don't say anything. Because if I argue with them, I'm just giving whatever it is they're saying even more power. If I don't agree with it, then I'm still not going to argue about it. I'm still not going to try to convince them that what they're thinking is a mistake. Because that's, in most cases, the only thing that's going to do is make them dig even deeper in their position. Because more people, most people would rather be right than to be happy. And if they didn't ask for your correction in the first place, that's even more the reason why you know you should just be quiet. Because a thought that's not based on love is not a thought that has any real power or that's really gonna last anyway. So the dream of salvation, which is the dream of happiness, your desire to have happiness, your desire to have peace, 
That now has new content. It's not the form alone in which the difference lies. Ooh. So what is your major lesson to learn? What is God's teacher's major lesson to learn? If you're going to be a demonstrator of love, what is your major lesson to learn? If you're going to be a demonstrator of truth, what is your major lesson to learn? Your major lesson to learn is how to react to ego, how to react to the ego, how to react to magic thoughts, how to react to fear thoughts, anger thoughts, without anger. How can I react to the things that people are seeing in the world that's not based on the truth? Well, the main thing we're trying to learn is how to react to what we are seeing around us without getting mad. One of the main characteristics of a teacher of peace is that they don't get upset about stuff all the time, that they don't stay angry and upset all the time. So one of your major lessons to learn is how to react to fear without anger, how to react to the insanity that we can see around us without anger. Because if you can react without anger, if you can keep your peace, what are you doing? Well, he says, only in this way can they proclaim the truth about themselves. If, I, if I'm saying that I'm here to be a demonstrator of love, if I'm here to be a demonstrator of love and a demonstrator of peace and a demonstrator of God, then if I'm walking around mad and arguing with people all the time and trying to convince them that they're wrong and I'm right, would I be proclaiming the truth about myself? No, I wouldn't be proclaiming the truth about myself if I'm reacting to magic thoughts, ego thoughts, fear thoughts, insane thoughts with anger. I don't know about you, but for a long time, I thought one of the things that made me a great person was how I would get upset about everything that was going on in the world. That the more angry that I got at everything, I thought that meant that I was a really caring person, that somehow or another, I was really bringing more peace and joy into the world. Are you aware that the Course in Miracles is saying to me, Earl, if you're here to be a demonstrator of love, if you're here to be a demonstrator of peace, then you got to learn how to react with peace. You have to learn how to react with joy. You have to learn how to react without attacking and trying to fix and trying to correct everyone around you. Only in this way could you proclaim the truth about yourself. So the once you learn how to react to the people and the things that people are saying, even if those things are perceived to be insane in your perception, if you can manage not to get angry, and stay centered and peaceful, you are proclaiming the truth about yourself, that you are really a peaceful person, that you are really a centered person. So through them, which is through the people who don't get mad and upset, the Holy Spirit, the teacher, the inner teacher of love, the divine can now speak of the reality of the Son of God, the child of God. See, you are a child of love. You are a child of love. You were created by love. You are a spiritual being. You are a spiritual being that was created by love. You were created by love. And if you're going to proclaim the truth about yourself, then you have to learn how to not get upset about everything that's going on around you. All the fear thoughts, all the attack thoughts, all the anger thoughts, the insanity that you see. Because if you don't get upset about it, then you can keep your peace. And if you're keeping your peace, then this is you proclaiming the truth about yourself. Do you see that? That the truth about yourself is that you are a peaceful, loving being. How are you demonstrating that you are a peaceful, loving being? You are demonstrating that you are a peaceful, loving being because you are not reacting to the insane thoughts of separation and grievances and, and insanity that you hear in the world with anger. So since you are a peaceful person that's not attacking everything and everybody, the Course says the Holy Spirit, your inner teacher, God, can now speak of the reality of you and the reality of all of us. So what is Spirit going to do through you? What is the voice for love going to do through you if you can maintain your peace and react to magic thoughts without anger? Well, now Spirit can speak through you. And when spirit speaks through you, what is it going to remind the world of? It's going to remind the world through you. Spirit is going to remind the world through you of sinlessness. That you are not sinful, I'm not sinful, you are not sinful, I'm not sinful, you are not guilty, I'm not guilty. You need to be reminded that your inherent nature, your real nature is not guilty, is not sinful, is not guilty. That your real nature is innocent. 
And sinlessness is the one unchanged, unchangeable condition of everything that God created. So what is the unchanged, unchangeable condition of everything that love created? Everything that was created by God, everything that's created by love is innocent. The Course in Miracles says something very radical. It says that you are not sinful and guilty. You are not sinful and guilty. You make mistakes sometimes and you see without love sometimes. Sometimes and you may even feel guilty sometimes or angry sometimes. You may even attack sometimes. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. That's you not learning your major lesson yet. But guess what? The one unchanged, unchangeable condition of everything that love created. And you were created by what? You were created by love. I say that you were created by love. I say that you were created by love. And you were created by God. You were created by love. You were created by God. You were created by love. Your innocence, your sinlessness, your innocence remains unchanged. You have an innocence that can never be changed. You have a goodness in you that can never be changed. You have an innocence in you that can never be changed. You have an innocence in you that can never be changed. And that innocence is what you are. You are a creation of God and you have nothing but innocence. Do you sometimes forget that you are innocent? Do you sometimes are you sometimes tempted to see yourself as bad or guilty? Well, that's just a mistake. That's an error in your perception of what you are. That is the ego. The ego is any thought, any idea that you have about yourself or anybody else that they are not inherently good. Now, that's not saying that out of a person's fear and insanity that they may not do something very unloving and what seems to be vicious or unkind. But that's them acting out of their programming, their conditioning, their wounds, their learnings. All the so-called evil that you think you see in the world, that's being, that's being caused by people who are totally and completely insane and wounded in guilt and fear and self-loathing and self-hatred. Anybody that would attack or harm or kill or rob somebody else, they're coming from insanity. They're coming from a deep call for help. They're coming from a deep call for love. That's what they're doing. They're calling for help. So if you learn how not to get angry at the insanity that you see and you can manage to maintain your peace, then you are proclaiming the truth, the truth about who you really are. And through you, God can now speak of the reality of all the children of God. So what is God? What is spirit going to tell people and express to people through you? Well, spirit through you is going to remind the world of sinlessness, innocence. Innocence and sinlessness is the one changed, the one unchangeable condition of all that God created, all that love created. So now that you are centered, because you are, you've learned how to react to what's going on and what people are saying without anger. Now spirit can speak the word of love, the word of God, through you to ears that are listening. When you maintain your center, when you maintain your peace, then the Holy Spirit can use you to bring Christ's vision, which is love's vision, to eyes that see. You see, in a sense, that's what I'm doing right now. What am I doing? Well, I'm, the Spirit, truth, the Course is using my body to teach that we should learn how to react to the ego, fear, anger, insanity, without anger, without anger. So if I can react to the insanity of the world without anger, I'm proclaiming the truth about myself. And so since I'm being a peaceful person, love can use me, spirit can use me and speak through me. And when spirit speaks through me, what is spirit going to do? Well, truth or spirit is going to remind everybody of innocence, the idea of innocence, the idea of love, which is the one unchanged and unchangeable condition in, in, in all that God created. So that means if I can remain centered and you can remain centered and stay in peace, then spirit can speak the word of love to listening ears, can bring the vision of love 
to eyes that see. Christ's vision is the vision of love. It's the sight that your true self sees. It's the sight. Christ's vision represents love's vision. So what is spirit going to do through you if you can maintain your peace and sanity? The Course says, now he, Christ, your true self, can is free. Free to do what? Your true self is free to teach all minds the truth of what they are. Is that not what I'm doing right now? Am I allowing the Course in Miracles spirit, the Jesus of the Course, to speak to you through my body? I'm teaching you all minds the truth of what they are. So I'm so right now, spirit is using my body to teach you the truth of what you are. Why am I teaching you the truth of what you are? And what are you? You're sinless, you're innocent, you are loving, you are lovable, you are spirit. So I'm free to teach you the truth about what you are. And by you learning the truth of what you are, what is gonna happen when you learn the truth of what you are, which is love? you will gladly be returned to God, to love. If, if you can remain peaceful and loving, you can be used by the universe, you can be used by spirit to remind people of who and what they really are. And what they really are is sinless and guiltless. That's what they really are. So the, these people, everyone, can be returned gladly to God, gladly to love. So what happens when you return gladly to God? What happens when you are returned gladly to love? When you are returned gladly to God, when you are returned gladly to love, now is guilt forgiven. Guilt is forgiven when you are gladly returned to love. How do you become gladly returned to love? Then you have to remember that you are innocent and that innocence is unchanged and unchangeable. How do you become a channel for love, a channel for God? You have to learn how to react to all of the insanity that you hear people speaking and the insanity that you see in the world. You have to learn how to react to the ego totally without anger, reacting to fear totally without anger, reacting to guilt and separation totally without anger. But you have to do what? You have to learn. You have to learn. Just because I'm telling you the way that you're going to become one day totally loving, aware of your innocence, it doesn't mean that that's the way you are today. Because if you were already that way, there would be no need for you to learn A Course in Miracles. So when I tell you what The Course in Miracles is saying, it's more or less setting the goal. It's more or less letting you know the direction that you're going to be going in. Not that you've mastered not reacting with anger to every situation. So how do you know when guilt is forgiven? Well, it's overlooked completely. See, if I really think that you are guilty, I'm overlooking the idea that you are guilty completely. So now is guilt forgiven, overlooked completely in God's sight love sight and in God's word and in God's truth. So how can you tell when guilt is forgiven? It's completely overlooked. How can you tell when you have forgiven? You are completely overlooking it. You're completely overlooking whatever it is you think you got the grievance about or the upset about. This is what you're going to learn to do through studying A Course in Miracles and through doing the workbook lessons in A Course in Miracles. When you complete the late the workbook lessons and you really apply the workbook lessons, you will have removed the blocks to you recognizing that you are innocent and sinless and guiltless. So, so what is it that anger screeches? What is it that anger screams? I'm trying to follow you, follow along with you. And if you happen to have a question about the, what we are talking about, and you can stay on topic and subject with your question, I'll glance down and I will also work the answer into this presentation so that you can hear it. Okay? 
I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in live. I know you could just listen to the replay, but I really appreciate that you are willing to take the time to focus in with each other and with me so we can do it together. Also, I want to let you know that uh, there would not be a there would not be a Facebook Live Course in Miracles Hardcore Course in Miracles next Thursday, which is uh, October twentieth, two thousand twenty-two. I do a lot of traveling in regard to teaching, so sometimes I'm not able to be here every week live. October twentieth, I think next Thursday. Correct me if I'm wrong, but next Thursday is October twentieth, two thousand twenty-two. I will not be doing a live presentation on October 20th, Thursday, October 20th, 2022. Okay? So, I'm looking. So, I'm looking at you. Like I said, if you have a question about what I'm saying, then I'll work it into my presentation. So, what is it that so what is it that anger does? So, what is getting mad and getting upset? What is that screaming? What is that screeching? It's screeching that guilt is real. Anger, but screeches that guilt is real. Anger screams that guilt is real. I'm angry because I'm angry because I believe that your guilt is real. When I'm angry, I'm screaming, guilt is real. I'm angry at you because I think you're so guilty. I'm angry, I'm angry. I'm angry at you because I think you're guilty. That's what anger is. I'm angry at you because I think you're guilty. Guilt, guilt, guilt is real. That's what anger screams. Anger screams, guilt is real. Anger screams, guilt is real. So at the point that you believe that guilt is real, how do you know that guilt is real? How do you know that you think guilt is real? You think guilt is real whenever you're angry. Whenever you're angry, you're screaming guilt is real. And what is it that happens to reality? when you are screaming through anger that guilt is real. Well, love, which is reality, is blotted out. See, reality is that innocence is real. So if you focused in on the idea that guilt is real, then you're blotting out reality because love is the only reality. Innocence is the only reality. So when a person is angry, they're screaming guilt is real. And when they're screaming that guilt is real, the truth is blotted out. Reality is blotted out in this insane belief. Do you know that the insane belief in guilt, that belief is taken as replacement for God's word? So what is God's word? What is God's word? God's word is that you are innocent. You may make mistakes. Mistakes are for correction. But a mistake is not what you are. It's something that you may see or do, but it's not what you are. So what happens when the man believes it's guilty? When the man believes it's guilty, that's, now this is really deep. The Course in Miracles is saying that a man that thinks it's guilty, that is a man that is it's using just the body's eyes. Because if you look through the body's eyes, certainly it looks like there are things that people should be feeling guilty about. When you're in the guilty part of your mind, then your body's eyes now see, your, your, your physical ears alone can hear. And when you believe in guilt, then the tiny little space of the body and the tiny breath of the body become the measure of reality. And, and when you just see things through the body and when you just hear things through the body, then the truth becomes diminutive. See, when I think I'm a body and I'm looking at things through the body and I'm looking at things in terms of the, the pain and the suffering and the upset and the attack that I think I see in the world because I'm looking through the body's senses, then the court says the truth that you are innocent and the truth that I am innocent and the truth that we are eternal and the truth that we are spirits, that truth becomes diminutive and meaningless. So uh, is the Course in Miracles saying that the reason that we have a body and the reason that we see things that are fearful and that make us angry through our physical senses is because when the man believes that it's guilty, then the man actually at that point projects a body that can then see the things that 
makes the mind think that guilt is real? Do you know that the idea that you're separate from God, the idea that a person is separate from God, the idea that a person is separate from love, that idea that we are attacking each other and separate from each other at some level? The Course in Miracles says, when you feel guilty, that everything, everything comes from the mind. Everything is a projection from the mind. And so if you have a lot of, if you have guilt in your mind, and the Course says all of us who are here who think we are separate, has some level of guilt in the mind. Not necessarily a guilt about the fact that you came home late last night and you promised you wouldn't. The Course is saying we have unconscious guilt, but that unconscious guilt is coming from the fact that we know we are lying to ourselves. That we are lying to ourselves whenever we tell ourselves there is no God, there is no oneness, there is no true innocence. So every time a person lies, it generates guilt. Whenever you think you are, you tell yourself something that's not true and you know it's not true, it generates guilt. So the guilt is actually coming from denying our true identity as children of God. When you deny your, when you, when you deny who you are, when you deny that you are love, when you deny that you are spirit, when you deny that you are created like love and connected to the source, when you think that you are just a physical body, just a human being, and you lose sight of your divine identity, when you lose sight of who you really are, then that generates guilt because the Course says, you know that that's a lie when you say that you die. That's a lie. You know that's a lie. You know that you don't really die, but you've forgotten the truth about what you are. You know you're connected to everything and everyone around you, and you know that it's your thoughts that's creating every single thing that you see and everything that you experience. You know that, but you've chosen to pretend you don't. So the Course says that generates guilt. And the once you believe that you're guilty, then you project a body. And when you project that body, then you see through the body's eyes. And when you think you're a body, when you think you're separate, then the truth doesn't mean anything to you. So when someone tells you that you are only love, that you are sinless, that you are guiltless, that you are eternal and mortal and free, if you've forgotten who you are, then you won't believe that that is true. And so the truth has become diminutive and meaningless. Wow, 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 wow. Let me see. Okay, that's why you have to listen to this at least three or four times because I'm saying some very simple, hardcore stuff. So what is the answer to all of this? Correction has one answer to all of this. All of what? Thinking that you're not innocent. An answer to thinking that you are separate from God. This is the answer to thinking that you may have lack or fear or sickness or separation. What is the answer to your still getting upset sometimes and seeing other people as insane or crazy or wrong and you're tempted to try to correct them? But the Course says, this is the answer. This is the correction. This is the correction that is the one answer to all of this. I'm about to give you the correction. That's the one answer to all of this. I'm about to give you the one answer to the world that rests on insanity and separation. Are you ready? Are you ready? If you're ready, shoot me some heart emojis. If you're ready to hear the one answer, if you're ready to understand the one answer. Here we go. Are you ready? Are you ready? Thank you. Because when you send the heart emojis, it lets me know that you are tuning in with me and that you're hearing what I'm saying. And that means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Here's the answer. See, the Course in Miracles gives us the answer. Thank you. Thank you. Here's the answer. You but mistake interpretation for the truth. What? You are mistaking your interpretations for being the truth. See, if I say that you are trying to attack me or enslave me or desert me in some way, then I'm going to use that interpretation. And if I use that interpretation of you, then I'm going to react to you as if you've done it. If my interpretation is that you don't like me, then I'm going to react to you as if you don't like me. But the truth is, the way that you are right now may not have anything to do with what I'm telling myself. So I mistake my interpretations for the truth. So what would be another example of that? 
If in your interpretation, if in your interpretation, if in your perception, you think you are separate from me and different from me, that's not the truth. If in your interpretation, you think that a person is guilty or bad or not a spiritual being, then that's an interpretation is not the truth. If you think that God punishes and that you are alone and that you are separate and that you are a victim of everything that happens, then your interpretation is not the truth. So the court says, you but mistake interpretation for the truth and you are wrong. But guess what? Guess what? Guess what? A mistake is not a sin. Making a mistake is not a sin. It's not a sin to make a mistake. It's not a sin to make a mistake. And even if you made a mistake, nor has reality been taken from its throne by your mistakes. Do you know that even if you make a mistake, reality still rules. God still rules. The truth still rules. Love still rules. Even if you are making a mistake, you are still loved. Even if you're making a mistake, you're still supported by spirit in the universe, by the Holy Spirit, by God. Do you know that your mistakes has not taken reality off its throne? God reigns forever. Do you know that love reigns forever? Love rules forever. Love rules forever. How, how long does love rule? How long does God rule? The court says God reigns forever. God rules forever. That means the laws of God alone prevail upon you. The only laws that actually prevail on you are the laws of love, the laws of peace, the laws of healing, the laws of joy, the laws of God. Those are the only laws that prevail. The laws of man, the laws of people, the laws of people who are insane with fear and anger and separation, Though the rules that we make up, thinking that we are separate from each other and separate from God, those rules do not prevail. Those rules of fear do not prevail upon you or upon the world. The rules, the laws that rule the world, the laws of fear and the laws of separation that we see in the world, those laws do not rule you. Those laws do not control you. God rules forever, and God's laws alone prevail upon you and upon the world. I say that the laws of love, the laws of God rule forever, and the laws of God alone prevail upon you and upon the world. So what does that mean? God's law, God's love remains what is the only thing there is? What is the only thing there really is? What is the only thing that you can really count on? What is the one thing that you can really count on? What is the one thing that you can really count on in the world? What is the one thing that you can really count on in the world? The one thing you can really count on in the world is the love of God, the love of your creator, the love of the universe. That is the only thing there is. That's what it says right here, right? It says, you but, you but mistake interpretation for the truth and you are wrong. But a mistake is not a sin. Nor has reality been taken from its throne by your mistakes. God reigns forever. God reigns forever. And God's laws alone prevail upon you. God's laws alone prevail upon you. God's laws alone prevail upon you and upon the world. God's love, God's love, your creator's love, the love of your creator remains the only thing there is, is the love of your creator, is the only thing there is, is the love of your creator, is the only thing that is, is the love of your creator, is the only thing that is, the only thing there is, the only thing there is, is the love of God. Fear is illusion. Fear is illusion. Fear is illusion. Fear is a I am the divine repetition teacher. I am the divine repetition teacher. I am your remembering coach. I am your remembering coach. What is it that you need to remember? What is it that you need to remember? You need to remember that fear is illusion. Fear is a false idea. Fear is a false idea. Fear is illusion. Fear is illusion. Now, do you all 
always remember that fear is an illusion. Do you always remember that fear is an illusion? Do you always remember that fear is an illusion? Of course you don't. If you all if you already remembered all the time that fear and anger and guilt is an illusion, then you would never be afraid. You would never be afraid. But if you have fear, it just means that you're believing something that isn't true. If you have fear, it means you're believing something that's not based on the truth. If you feel fear, it means that you are believing something that's not based on the truth, something that's not based on love. Fear is an illusion because you are like love. Fear is an illusion because you are like God. Fear is an illusion because you are like your creator. Fear is an illusion. Fear is an illusion. Guilt is an illusion. Lack is an illusion. Sickness is an illusion because you are like God. And that means you are whole. Your true self is whole. Your true self is complete. So in order to heal, it becomes essential. What is essential? In order to heal, it becomes essential that you let all your own mistakes be corrected. If you want to heal, you have to let your mistakes be corrected. Corrected. If you want to heal, it's not about focusing all your attention on trying to fix somebody else's mistakes. If you want to be healed, you have to let all your mistakes be corrected. And if you sense even the faintest hint of irritation in yourself as you respond to anybody, if you feel even the faintest hint of irritation in yourself as you respond to anybody, if you feel even the slightest hint of irritation and anger in yourself as you respond to anyone, then you need to let yourself realize that you have made an interpretation that's not true. Whenever you feel irritated, you've made an interpretation that's not true. Whenever you feel anger, whenever you feel guilt, whenever you feel depression, whenever you feel lack, whenever you feel sickness, whenever you feel separation, instantly realize that you've made an interpretation that's not true. If you feel even the slightest bit of irritation when you respond to anybody, then you need to instantly realize that you have made an interpretation that's not true. You've made an interpretation that's not true. When you're irritated and angry with anybody, you've made an interpretation that's not based on the truth. So what should you do? So what should you do when you realize that you made an interpretation that's not true? Because you know you're feeling irritated. What should you do? You need to turn within to your eternal guide. Turn to the Holy Spirit within you. Turn to the love, the divine within yourself. Turn to the sanity within yourself. And let the Holy Spirit judge what your response should be. Let the Course in Miracles teachings judge what the response should be. You should turn within when you feel an irritation, which means you made an interpretation and it's not true. Then you should turn within to your eternal guide and let Spirit judge what the response should be. If you let God, if you let the truth that's in this book, for instance, if you let it judge what the response should be, so are you healed. So how are you healed? You are healed when you instantly realize that you made an interpretation that's not true when you feel the slightest hint of irritation in yourself as you respond to anybody. When you feel the slightest hint of irritation in yourself, as you, if, when you respond to anything or anybody, if you feel irritated, if you feel irritated, what is it that you need to realize? If you feel irritated, what is it that you need to realize? If you feel irritated, what is it that you need to realize? If you feel irritated, what is it? What is it that you need to realize? You need to realize that you've made it. You've made, you've made, you've made, you've made an interpretation that isn't true. You made an interpretation that isn't true. When you feel the slightest hint of irritation, when you respond to anybody or anything, you need to instantly realize that you've made an interpretation that's not true. Then you need to turn within. Turn within to your eternal guide and let your eternal guide, the love in you, the truth in you, you, you need to let the truth in you, God in you, spirit in you, judge what the response should be. So are you healed? And in your healing, do you know that in your healing, do you know that in your healing is the other person healed with you? That's the pupil. So what is your soul responsibility? What is your only responsibility? What is your only... That's right, Kim. I sometimes also find that I've been misinterpreting up the gazoo. That's what the Course in Miracles is so good about. It makes me aware of what I'm doing to myself, you know? So the sole responsibility of a teacher of God is to accept the atonement for themselves. So what is the atonement? 
What is the what is the Course in Miracles called? The atonement. The Course in Miracles calls the atonement correction. Atonement means correction. Atonement means correction. Atonement means the undoing of errors. See, that's why I use the substitutions when I teach. So instead of saying atonement, I'll say correction or I'll say the undoing of errors. So that means the sole responsibility of God's teacher is to accept the atonement for himself. The sole responsibility of a teacher of God, a teacher of love, your sole responsibility is to accept correction, the undoing of errors for yourself. Accept the undoing of your mistakes. Accept the undoing of your mistakes. Instead of worrying about everybody else's mistakes and trying to fix or correct everybody else, A Course in Miracles is saying, when you accept the Course in Miracles for yourself, when you accept the truth for yourself, when you accept the undoing of your ego for yourself, when this has been accomplished, when what has been accomplished, the undoing of errors, correction, when this has been accomplished, the teacher of God becomes a miracle worker by definition. So the teacher of God becomes a miracle worker when you accomplish what? When you accomplish accepting this truth for yourself, accepting the course for yourself, accepting the correction for yourself, for yourself, that's your only responsibility, is to accept this for yourself, not to make sure anybody else around you believes it or accepts it or does it. The sole responsibility that you have is to accept what for yourself? To accept the truth for yourself. That means that your so-called sins have been forgiven you. That, so what does it mean to say your so-called guilt and so-called sense of sin within yourself has been forgiven? It means you are no longer condemning yourself. How can you tell when you've truly forgiven yourself? You're no longer condemning yourself. You're not putting yourself down. You're not judging yourself. You're not putting yourself down. You're not condemning yourself, criticizing yourself. When you do that, that's how you can tell that you have forgiven yourself because you'll no longer be condemning yourself. And certainly because you're no longer condemning yourself, do you know that you will no longer be condemning anyone else? If you are not condemning yourself, you won't be condemning anyone else. Does that mean that anyone that is condemning someone else is someone that is condemning themselves? That is exactly right. So, since you're no longer condemning yourself, how can you then condemn anyone? And who is there whom your forgiveness can fail to heal? Forgiveness, which is correct perception. Forgiveness is what? Forgiveness is correct perception. When you say you forgive me, you're saying you have the correct perception of me. When you say you forgive someone, it means you have the correct perception of them. So what is the correct perception of them? The correct perception of them is to see them as what? Sinless, guiltless, spiritual beings, just like you. A child of love, a child of God, just like you. Now I'm going to do a quick recap, a quick recap of what I have covered with you. I'm a full-time teacher of A Course in Miracles. I'm a full-time teacher of A Course in Miracles. I'm a full-time teacher of A Course in Miracles. I'm a full-time teacher of A Course in Miracles. If you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, if you feel like you're benefiting through what's coming through me and you feel moved and you would like to make a financial expression of appreciation, you can go to my website, www.earlperdy, P-U-R-D-Y, earlperdy.com. You can also use Venmo, the Cash App, PayPal, or Zelle. All you need is my email address. My email address is earlperdy at earlperdy.com, earlperdy at earlperdy.com. And you can also use that email to let me know what you think of my classes and in the presentation that I do. I love the feedback. But if it's to judge and criticize and condemn, then in that case, save it. <laughs> All right. I'm available. I'm a Course in Miracles counselor, mentor, teacher. I will use and show you how, I can, how you can use the teachings of the Course in Miracles to solve any problem that you think you have. I can use the Course in Miracles and show you how to apply the Course in Miracles to any area of your life that you have problems and an issue in that you would like to see healed and resolved. I'm a Course in Miracles counselor, okay? And it works. I'm also an astrologer and a numerologist. And if you're open to that way of receiving information, which is just another way the Spirit can guide, 
then I'm available for that too. I call what I do clarity sessions. If you go to my website, you can look under the clarity session tabs, tab and you can get more details about my services and you can book an appointment with me right online from my website. I would love to work with you on a personal level, one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. On Sundays at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, I do another Course in Miracles Facebook Live. And I'm also available for you to attend that presentation in person if you live in Denver, Colorado. I'm doing it at 1555 Race Street. 1555 Race Street, R-A-C-E, in Denver, Colorado, 80206, as well as broadcasting it online live. Then Thursday is at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. And don't forget, October 20th, 2022, I will not be doing a live presentation of A Course in Miracles. I'll be out of town. So just wanted to let you know, but we'll be resuming as usual the following week. Listen to this, watch this at least four times, at least four times on the Earl Purdy page. I have hundreds and hundreds of classes on YouTube and on my website, including all of the workbook lessons. So I'm here to be truly helpful. I'm here to be truly helpful. I love you. I appreciate you. We end this together. So let me do a quick review. You ready? Let's do the prayer. Let's do the one correction. Let's do the one correction. Now, here we go. You but mistake interpretation for the truth. You but mistake interpretation for the truth. You but mistake interpretation for the truth. And you are wrong, and you are wrong. When you mistake your interpretations for the truth, you are wrong, you are wrong. When you mistake interpretation for the truth, your interpretations are not necessarily the truth. And if in any of your interpretations, make you feel irritated or afraid or angry, then you need to recognize that when you sense even the same, the faintest hint, when you sense even the faintest hint of irritation in yourself, as you, when you sense even the faintest hint of irritation in yourself as you respond to anyone, you need to instantly realize what? That you made an interpretation that's not true when you're feeling angry and upset, you're making interpretations that are not true. So you need to turn within to the Holy Spirit, to your loving right mind. And you need to let your loving right mind, the part of your mind that is connected to the divine, to the truth, you need to let it judge what the response should be. So the Course in Miracles gives you that response. And then you are healed. Do you know that in your healing is the other person healed with you? What is your sole responsibility? What is your sole responsibility? The sole responsibility of God's teacher is to accept the atonement for himself or herself. Atonement means correction. Atonement means correction. Atonement means correction. Atonement means correction or the undoing of errors. Atonement means correction and or the undoing of errors. Atonement means correction or the undoing of errors. When the undoing of errors has been corrected, when you've accepted the truth for yourself, you become a miracle worker. When you accept the truth for yourself, you become a, a love worker. When you accept the truth for yourself, that means you are no longer condemning yourself. So how can you condemn anyone? You but mistake interpretation for the truth and you are wrong. You are wrong. But a mistake is not a sin. 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 Nor has reality been taken from its throne. Reality hasn't been taken from its throne by your mistakes. Your mistakes has not, has not, have not taken the creator off its throne. Guess what? God reigns forever. Love reigns forever. Truth reigns forever. 
Love reigns forever in God's laws, God's laws, God's laws, love's laws, love laws, love's laws, love laws, love laws alone prevail upon you and upon the world. God's laws alone prevail upon you and upon the world. God's love remains the only thing there is. The only thing there is is the love of your creator is the only thing there is. Fear is illusion for you are like God. Fear is illusion for you are like God. Woo! One more time. In order to heal, it becomes essential that you let all your own mistakes be corrected. Let your own ego be corrected. What does that mean? If you sense even the faintest hint of irritation, if you feel even the slightest hint of irritation in yourself, as you respond to anyone and you feel some level of upset or irritation, what is it that you need to realize? You need to realize that you have made an interpretation that is not true. So when I am upset, depressed, and angry, I am making interpretations, I am making perceptions that are not true. What do I do? I turn within, I turn within to my God. The Course in Miracles is also your guide. Let your inner guide judge what the response should be. Let the part of you that has love and peace judge what the response should be. That's how you will be healed. And in your healing, it's the other person healed with you. Your only responsibility is to accept the correction and the truth and the course for yourself. When you have accepted these teachings and the truth for yourself, you become a love worker. You become a miracle worker. And that means that you are no longer condemning yourself. And when you are no longer condemning yourself, you are no longer condemn anyone else. That's how you know you have forgiven yourself. So you won't condemn anyone else. Mighty companion, boy, talking about teaching what you need to learn. I really needed to hear this. You are a blessing to me. I do not take you for granted. I do not take you for granted. It is good knowing that I'm not alone and wanting to know the truth. So that's how you deal with the ego. That's how correction is made. This is what we covered, how correction is made. Mighty companions, I appreciate you so much. I love you. Listen to this over and over and over again. Repetition, repetition, remembering, remembering, repetition, repetition, remembering. Mighty companion, may the course be with you. You are a blessing. You are innocent. You are spirit. Sometimes you forget it. Sometimes you forget it. I love you. I love you, Kim. I love you. I love you. I love you. Love you so much.